iOS 18 has so many awesome new ways to customize your iPhone. And I'll be showing the 10 coolest features in customization, settings, and apps that you guys must know to make the most of your iPhone. You can now make your home and lock screen beautiful and efficient with tons of cool customization options. You can now tap and hold on the home screen, go to the wallpaper section, and you'll see a new set of wallpapers with different colors and also a cool dynamic wallpaper that changes. Now you can change these controls on the lock screen. If you hold down, tap on customize, you can choose the lock screen to change those corner app shortcuts. You can pick from a bunch of options like opening your favorite apps directly from the lock screen. For me, it's Apple Music for walks and workouts and also Notes app to quickly write down my ideas. And don't worry about the camera app, you can still swipe right on the lock screen to open it. The next update is that now we can tap and hold on apps to drag them anywhere, like placing them at the top, bottom, or sides for quicker access without them snapping back to the top, which actually was a bit annoying, especially if you choose your personal photos as wallpaper. Next, you can turn apps into widgets by holding down on your favorite app. You'll get three options, small app, small widget, and large widget. So for example, when you choose a small widget, you'll see that app as a widget on your screen. So let's say you added your favorite widgets here. Now you can resize them using this little handle at the bottom, which is pretty handy. Finally, we can customize app icons without all the hassle. So if you just hold down, tap the edit button and choose customize, you can make icons smaller or larger. If you make them larger, it removes the app names for a cleaner look. You can also change their tint to any color. You can actually use the color picker to match icon colors with your wallpaper. There is also a dark mode for app icons, which I think it's pretty cool. If you want to hide or lock your apps, especially when someone else is using your iPhone, it's super easy. Plus, the apps info won't show up in search or notifications. First, go to settings, then face ID and set up a passcode and face ID. Tap and hold an app you want to lock, select require face ID, and it'll ask for face ID or your passcode every time you open it. Also, to hide an app, choose hide and require face ID and the app will vanish from the home screen. So to access it, you should go to the app library and find this hidden app folder here and then open it with face ID or your passcode. The control center got a whole new look. It now splits into different pages, each with colorful controls. Just swipe down from the home screen to move between pages like media, playback, home controls, and connectivity. You can even add your own pages by tapping the plus button and swiping down. At the bottom of each page, tap add control to pick from lots of controls. You can resize icons with a handle, making them small, round, boxy, or whatever design you like. You can now rearrange your control center pages to put your most used ones first. Tap and hold on the page to drag icons around and customize the layout to your liking. There is also a new power off button in the top right for shutting down your iPhone. The flashlight in control center got a cool update too. Just swipe up or down to adjust the brightness and swipe left or right to change the width. It is so cool. There are some amazing new accessibility features. If you go to vocal shortcuts in accessibility, you can choose an action like recording a video and then record a phrase like record to trigger that action. After repeating the phrase three times, the shortcut is set up. So you just need to say the phrase next time you want to record a video. Another cool feature, eye tracking. You can control your iPhone just by looking at it. Kind of like using Apple Vision Pro. So after setting it up, you'll navigate through your phone with your eyes using the front-facing camera and AI. Next up, music haptics. 
which works with lots of songs on Apple Music. With this feature, your iPhone vibrates to the beat of the music, so you can actually feel the rhythm. Next cool thing, there is a new vehicle motion cues option that helps with motion sickness while you are in a moving vehicle. It actually shows animated dots on the edges of your screen that sync with the vehicle's movement, making it easier to handle the motion, you know? There are also some new ways to play with text on message app, you know, kind of cooler to express your emotions. Apple has made tapbacks way more colorful and fun. You can use any emoji or sticker to reply. Just long press a message, tap the emoji icon, and choose your favorite ones. When typing a message, if you highlight any part of your message and tap the A icon here, you can add cool new text effects. It's a really fun way to animate letters, words, phrases, or emojis to make your message stand out. Now if you tap the plus button, you'll see a send later option. You can schedule your messages to be sent at a specific time or date. Even if your iPhone is off, your handy, message will still be low on battery but need to send something later. Apple now supports RCS, so you can text between iPhone and Android over Wi-Fi and send high resolution media and also you'll get read receipts. But Android message bubbles will stay green. Photos app got a fresh look. I kind of like how finding stuff is quicker and everything feels more organized. And now everything is on one screen. Just scroll up and down or side to side for carousels. Now the app has kind of two main sections, a top carousel for your full photos library and a bottom area where you can customize which content collections show up. So if you want a cleaner look, just scroll to the bottom of the app and hit the customize icon here. And from there, you can pick and choose which albums to show, making it so much easier to find what you need. Now we have a way better search. Just tap the search icon here and type what you're looking for. You can almost describe anything you want and the app uses AI to find photos and videos matching your query. You also have a new utilities section here that automatically categorizes your photos and videos into useful albums. Also if you tap the arrow at the bottom of your library and go to view options, you can uncheck show screenshots to keep things tidy. So after updating to iOS 18, you'll find a new app called Passport. It kind of keeps all your passwords, verifications, and Wi-Fi security codes in one spot. So I guess you don't need another password manager app if you are an Apple user, but let me know what you guys think about it. When you first open the passwords app, you'll see that the all section automatically saves the usernames and passwords for most of the accounts and websites you've used on your iPhone so far. Also, if you tap this plus button here, you can easily add new accounts and save passwords. Now you can also find and copy any Wi-Fi passwords you've connected to from here. Plus, you can create shared passwords and share them with your family, which can be super handy in some situations. If you have an iPhone with this action button here, now you can assign almost any control, like the ones in your control center, directly to it. Just go to settings, then action button, and you'll find a new control section here. You can pick from the same options available in the control center. This means you can now perform actions directly with the action button. No more using shortcuts for dealing with complicated setups. It's way easier and more convenient. The calculator app just got some awesome new features. If you tap the new calculator button, you'll see options like basic, convert, scientific, and math notes. Math notes now connects to your notes app and make it super easy to access your info there. Tap on the calculator icon to find math notes, create a note and start typing your calculations and watch the app solve them for you. You can even use the markup tool to write by hand and it'll solve them too. Pretty cool. This feature is also available on iPadOS 18. There is a new convert button for quick conversations, which lets you convert different measurements. It also lets you convert between different currencies like the US dollar and pound. Just tap the icon and pick what you need to convert like currency, date, and more. And if you tap on scientific button here, 
you'll access advanced calculations in portrait mode. There are also some important new in-app features in iOS 18 that you need to know about. The calendar app now has cool new views, compact, stacked, and details. You can switch between them with a simple pinch, which is super handy for checking how busy you are. It even makes me want to use time blocking more. Plus, Apple's integrated the Reminders app with Calendar, so you can tap the plus button here to add reminders right to your calendar. It's perfect for tracking tasks, calls, or any kind of appointments. There is a cool new update in the Notes app that I think you'll find it useful. You can now record audio directly in the Notes app. Just hit the attach icon, record your voice, and you'll also see the transcription right there. It's super handy for students or anyone who needs to keep track of the important info. You can now record videos while your favorite music plays in the background and it'll capture both the video and the background music. So you don't have to pause your music when you open the camera app. So the full iOS 18 release is coming in September, but you can try the public beta right now. And let me know guys which updates you like best and stay tuned for more tech tips. See you soon.